Uh, today on The Wonderful World of Marketing, we are talking about data, not the robot from the Star Trek The Next Generation, but data that you use to drive your business and drive revenue for the company, get promoted, become successful, and live a life of leisure. Welcome, welcome to The Wonderful World of Marketing. Today I've got a special edition, we're talking about data. And I'm a CMO, and just like all of you out there uh, watching me, you're frustrated and challenged and feeling um, mentally exercised by the number of systems that you have to work with. You know, here at Microsoft, we obviously work with some of our own systems, like uh, Microsoft Dynamics 365. We obviously use that for almost everything we do. But there are a number of other systems that I have to have in order to traverse the entire customer experience journey from anonymous to known, to an opportunity to a customer. Things like Adobe is a really big part of what we do in the anonymous stage. Marketo is really important in the known nurture stage. And then Sprinkler we use both at the anonymous and customer nurture stages. And there are many other systems. I've got probably at any one point in time about a hundred different systems that I'm working with. And then the challenge is if you're trying to get a consistent view of how your customer experience system is working, it's very difficult when you've got a bunch of disconnected systems. And they've all got reporting in them, but they're just reporting on what they do. It's the, uh, it's the elephant problem. You know, we're all touching different parts of the beast, but we really can't tell what the whole elephant looks like. Um, this had become quite a challenge for us, and we realized that we needed to solve it if we were going to become real revenue marketers, because unless we could see how each part of the journey was working, it would be impossible to optimize and make it work correctly overall. Uh, we started by building a giant SQL cube. Uh, then we built something that's less obvious. We built a middle layer in SQL, which instantiated the filters. So the filters are all the same. Because the problem you get into in large organizations is that people will pull data with slightly different filters, and it re results in the data being still different. So we set the filters, and then we actually pulled the most recent data into the middle layer uh, out of the cube so that it's highly performant. And then on top of that, we put a visualization layer in Power BI, which is our newest visualization tool, and built out a number of different views um, that we can use for both tele, events, and other parts of the business. Now, the result has been absolute data consistency. And for the first time, and this will sound like almost unbelievable, but for the first time, the marketing department can look from anonymous all the way to win and see a consistent view of the data and be able to track through pipeline, through um, known prospects, and through MAQLs, and understand how everything is working. And it's, quite frankly, revolutionary. Uh, it has completely changed the conversation that we have with each other. And importantly, it's really changed the conversation that we have with sales and with sellers. Because we can actually show them what's flowing into their queues. We can show them leads that they need to follow up on. And we can help them work on their pipeline as a team. It's been amazing. So I'm going to show you that tool right now. I'm going to do a demo of my dashboard. I'm showing you my real dashboard. So this isn't a fake demo. But because some of the data in there is obviously sensitive, you will see certain areas you know, fuzzed out a bit just to protect the innocent. Um, but this is the dashboard that I use every day to run my business. OK, so I'm going to show you two dashboards today. This first one is my modern marketing all up dashboard. It goes from known prospect all the way to um, win. I'm going to start with the, the main dashboard here, the modern marketing dashboard. And I'm just going to give you a quick tour of what's in here. This is a standard Power BI out of the box. So there's no fancy HTML in here, uh, nothing in here that would be um, different than what you would have in a normal E5 SKU of Office 365. So now if I go across the top here, um, it starts in known prospect. And I've got um, MAQLs, which is the Microsoft way of saying MQL. Uh, and then um, to, to tell us tele accepted lead, tele qualified lead, a US opportunity, a sales accepted lead, a sales qualified lead, and then a win. So this is kind of the, the side to side view of my funnel. Um, and then we've got uh, as rows, we'll have time periods like year to date, month to date, month over month, week over week, um, and then actuals by segment. Uh, and then we use indexes like a lot of marketers to show progress or. Um, or um, 
challenges. Now, the, the way Power BI works is you've got this sort of one overall view. So I can kind of at a glance in a meeting, I like to call this my running down the hallway view. Um, I can just sort of have a sort of sense of where I stand. Um, so let's dig into the MAQL area, let's see what's going on here. We're going to go into the year to date section here. And, um, um, and then if I go across, you can see we've actually taken the stuff we have in the main dashboard and we bring it across in the middle here. So again, you can see it right away. Now, the key to Power BI is to be able to filter because I can see a lot of rolled up views. I can see it by segment. I can see it by lead stage in the funnel. Uh, by product is really important. So seeing it by product is really critical. Uh, and then, of course, I can see it by different channels and by campaigns. Um, and I've got average lead score uh, and how much the MQLs have been aged by and program types. So there's all sorts of different views. And quite frankly, what I tend to do is tend to identify an overall business challenge and then go into what might be causing that challenge or how do I solve it. Uh, for example, if I see that there's one thing that's generating most of the MQLs, but we're not spending enough money behind it, I'll divert spending from lower performing uh, channels or lower performing campaigns and put them onto my higher performing campaign so that I can close my gap. Um, another thing that has to be done is you have to be able to filter by a bunch of different sort of criteria. So we can filter by product. So I can just click up here and uh, this is just a data platform view and it will restart this all from a data platform standpoint and I get that data platform view of how that's working. And that's actually one of the interesting things because the overall MAQL number is somewhat interesting, but you know, maybe I'm particularly interested to see how SQL's doing if I'm on the SQL business or I want to understand more about where we're going there. Uh, now with the, these filters, you can actually have multiple filters checked at the same time. So I can, I can actually say in Edge, uh, say I'll pick um, EPG, which is our large enterprise team. And so I can look at SQL and EPG. And you can actually see we're doing awesome there. And maybe find out a little bit more about why that's working so well. Uh, if I want to kind of get rid of that view, I just unclick those. And I can choose some different filtering. I can look at sub-segments, which I'm not going to do right now. I can also go by region, and I can go by district. There's also an even more sophisticated set of filters just here on the right. So if I click this, um, I can actually do all the things that I have on the top here, I can do in this top box here. Now, the question you might ask is, well, why do you have the filters twice? And what we found is that, again, just kind of going to human behavior, we found that there's a the set of things that people like to filter on most frequently, they like to have right in front of them. And then more advanced filtering, they, they like to have it, but just maybe behind a different tab. And so what you see on this page right now is the stuff that people use, need to use most often. Uh, but you can go in here and you can actually select by campaign. So you can see all of our campaigns are here. And I could take a look at, say, the business intelligence campaign. And I can see how that campaign is working. And when I do that filter selection, the Power BI um, sheet refreshes and comes up with all the stats around the business intelligence campaign. Um, I can also, I'm going to uncheck that. And um, then I can also take a look at by fiscal quarter, uh, fiscal year, um, by the person in the district, um, by the type of program that we have running in Marketo, um, by the month, by original source, by priority, which is by product, and by program type and by segment. And the segment types uh, load in here and you can pick them as well. And so all these different filters on the right um, are a great way to be able to get precision in this here as well. Uh, so then you can also take any one of these charts and you can expand it out. So just go like that, and boom. You can see the full chart if you want to. And then you can just bring it back again and um, bring, bring it back to the main report. Uh, you can also uh, drill down. So if you click this little drill down button, I can go into um, sort of the Azure platform one here, for example, and get more detail on what is driving specifically the MAQLs for Azure. So now I can actually see all the different programs that are driving the MAQLs for Azure. So you can see here in Azure that there's a few things that are working quite well. And then look at this long tail. These are all, look, I can just keep going for a couple of hours here. All these are activities, things that we did, webinars we ran, brochures we created, websites we built, all this stuff really not having any real impact on the business. Right? What's having an impact in the business are these kind of half dozen items right here at the top. That is awesome insight. Right? And then basically what we do is we can take all the money we spent on that long tail 
concentrated into the top end, and that's how we're going to hit our numbers in this case. That, for me, is uh, kind of a quick tour. I'm always happy to do an even deeper dive with your teams uh, at one of our Microsoft Technology Centers or anywhere else uh, in the world where Microsoft lives. We do demos at Microsoft stores. I can do a Skype demo for you from my office. Always happy to show people the way we work and the way we use Power BI, SQL, and Office to be able to run our business. So how do you get this in your own organization? The, the interesting thing is that many organizations actually already own the tools needed to produce and create what I just showed you. Uh, there's two core components, which is uh, SQL on Azure, uh, and that's, we obviously are running it all SQL Cloud. And then Office 365 E5 or SPE. Uh, either one of those versions include Power BI. And so you can actually start building this tomorrow. Now, one thing I do get questions on is, you know, what were all the different steps you went through and how did you learn how to build all these different uh, views and filters. And because each organization is unique, I can't just you know, pop out a recipe, but we are available to consult. I'm delighted to help you, give you advice. Um, you can reach me at gradcon at microsoft.com, or you can uh, send me a DM through Twitter to at gradcon, uh, or you know, friend me on Facebook at gradcon as well. But any way you want to get a hold of me, feel free to reach out. We'll connect you and get you uh, sorted out with folks who've built this and help you understand how to build your own views as well. Thanks and have a great day.